Hi, it's Jimmy McIntyre here. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at how we can remove lens flare like this and replace it with a much cleaner image like this. And just for fun, we're going to go through a whole digital blending workflow to finally end up with a more balanced, dramatic image like this. So I hope you enjoy it. Removing lens flare is probably one of the easiest things you can do in Photoshop as long as you get it right in camera first. As you can see, on our base exposure we have this lovely sun spike which gives the image so much energy. However, to the right we have lens flare and we have some small spots of lens flare throughout the image. To get rid of this, all we need to do is take a second exposure and block the sun with something like our finger or our thumb. And by doing so, we also remove the lens flare. Now we simply need to layer and mask them. To do that, I'm going to make sure I have the Move tool selected, and I'm going to drag this over and put it on my other exposure. Now I'm going to make the top layer invisible. To do that, I simply hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and press the Create New Layer Mask button. Then I go to my paintbrush, I choose my foreground as white, and make sure it's big enough and I change the opacity to 100. Now we simply paint the exposure out. And that's it. We now have an image completely free of lens flare. When we're working with multiple exposures, it's often necessary to do this with each exposure, especially if you're going to feed these exposures into something like Photomatix or Nick HDR FX. However, since we're going to be doing this manually, I have a darker exposure here that I'm going to use just for the sky and for the sky between the arch and the sky at the top. And since there's no lens flare in these areas, we don't need to do this again. Instead, I'm going to drag this exposure and place it on top of my two other exposures. Now to blend these exposures, I'm going to use luminosity masks. If you're new to luminosity masks, you'll see some links in the description to this video which will help you have a better understanding of how powerful they can be in post-processing. To create luminosity masks, I'm going to make these two layers invisible and I'm going to open up my Easy Panel. And this is free for anybody interested. All you need to do is sign up to my weekly photography newsletter where I send you tutorials and articles around photography. And you'll get this instantly in your email. Now I'm going to choose my base layer and press Create Luminosity Masks. We can see our newly created luminosity masks in the channels palette here. But before we can use them, we have to make this top layer invisible. So I'm going to make a black layer mask like before and go back to our channels palette and choose a brights 2. And brights 2 is going to include much of the sky and between the arch here. So to make the selection, we just hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac and press the left mouse button over the thumbnail. Our selection will appear, you'll see the marching ants, and to make them invisible we press Ctrl and H. Now we go to the paintbrush, make sure that the mask is selected, change our foreground colour to white, and we can make our brush a lot bigger. Opacity set to 100, that's okay. And we can just gently paint in this darker exposure, and you can see the sky is coming in nicely. Now we're just going to paint in under the arch, very gently, and we can go over it a couple of times just to strengthen the effect. There we go. Now I don't want to weaken the sun spikes too much, so I'm just going to bring back some of the vibrancy from that area. Okay, that's great. So this is before the blending process. And this is after the blending process. It's a much more balanced image. Now we need to merge all three layers non-destructively. To do that, we're going to hold down Shift and press the bottom layer. And you'll see all three become highlighted. Next, we press the right mouse button and go to Merge Layers. But before pressing Merge Layers, we hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac 
and we press the left mouse button. And this will create a merged version of all three of those layers. Now we can group these layers. We don't need them anymore. Press Ctrl and G. And we can come back to that later. For now, I'm going to call it Merged. Now that we have our merged layer, we need to look at it and decide what adjustments are necessary so that we can really get the most out of this scene. Firstly, I see a lot of potential in the foreground and on the arches to draw out some of that fine detail in the rocks. To do this, we need to be looking at making very fine contrast adjustments, and one of the best ways to do that is through Nick's Color FX. In the color effects, my favorite filter undoubtedly is the Pro Contrast filter, and within that, the Dynamic Contrast slider. This is where we can draw out that fine detail. So to give you an example of that, I'm just going to drag it to the right, and you can see the light shift, and the emphasis now is drawn to the foreground and the detail in the rocks, and it looks fantastic. We can also make a general contrast adjustment just to give the image more kick. And that looks great. However, in the highlight, you can see it's becoming a little bit overexposed. So we can, just by moving this slider, choose not to affect the highlights too much by our adjustments. And maybe do the same with the shadows slightly. Okay, that looks great. You can see now the foreground has much more emphasis on it. So I'm gonna press okay. Now that Color Effects has finished working its magic, we can see that it's had a very strong effect. If we look at before, the image is extremely flat, and now it has a lot more life to it. But it's a little bit strong, the whole effect, and we're losing a little bit of information in the arch here, and the sky's getting a bit too bright, so I'm going to bring the general opacity down to about 60, 65, 68%. Yeah, and that looks much better. Now let's merge these two images, non-destructively of course, and draw out some more detail from the foreground here. I'm going to do that using the Detail Enhancer in my Easy Panel. Now if you want to know how to create your own detail enhancing effect, there is a tutorial linked to the description of this video that will show you exactly how to do it. But for now, I'm just going to press play. Okay, the Detail Enhancing effect is finished. I'm going to zoom in and show you the difference it makes. This is before and this is after. And you can see it does make a significant difference. But it's a little bit much, I think, for this image. So instead, I'm going to make it invisible. And I'm again going to paint these adjustments in selectively. And I'm not going to paint it in the whole image. I'm just going to paint it around about here in the foreground at about 52%. 50%. And because this is where I want the eye to look in the end. So if I zoom in, before and after, you can see the fine contrast there being exaggerated. Now I'm going to make a quick color adjustment just to remove some of this pink cast that we have in the foreground. I'll do that through opening a color balance layer and choosing the magenta slider and moving it slightly to the right. And you can see that's removed the pink cast but I'm going to reduce the opacity because I liked some of that color. So maybe down to around 65%. Let's have a look before. That looks good. Okay, and finally, we need to create a vignette. And the reason why we're creating a vignette is because there's a lot going on in this image, especially in the foreground, but these areas don't really help in any way. So we want to control the, the viewer's eyes to look at the areas that are of most importance. And that happens to be the sun here and the interesting detail in the foreground and on the rocks in the arch. To create a simple vignette, I'm going to go to the elliptical marquee tool, make sure my feather is set to 200, and I'm just going to grab around here and drag all the way across the image. And this is our selection. However, we need to invert this so it selects the outside of the image and not the center of the image. Now we can open up a curves layer. And we can be quite strong with this vignette and really bring it down. As you can see, it's done a great job of isolating this front part of the image, but along this arch here, this part of the arch, it's a little bit dark along to the right and also to the left. Plus the sky to the right has become a little bit too dark as well. So we're changing the brush 
the foreground color to black and we're just going to mask some of this out just to make it a little bit more consistent. The main goal of this, of the vignette, is to make sure that we're concentrating the eye in the foreground here. We're trying to take attention away from these areas. And if we just lower the opacity even more, paint out some here. I think that should do it. And that's it, our finished image. To give you an idea of what it looked like before and after, I'm going to group these layers and I'm going to make these two invisible. And now this is what it looked like before. At the beginning, we had a number of overexposed areas. We had very little in terms of detail or any mood in the image, really. We also had these lens flare impurities that we had to get rid of. But after, we have a much cleaner image without any lens flare. It's nicely balanced with detail in the overexposed areas. And we've generally given the image much more detail and mood. And that's it. As usual, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or find me on Facebook under Jimmy McIntyre and say hello. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.